I welcome you to this wonderful conference. I wish I could be there with you. And I was asked to welcome you, and I do want to welcome you because I love you so much. My heart and soul is a Hungarian Jewish girl who grew up in Kasha, uh, Kosice, uh, uh, 1927, so I'm going to speak English. And I remember that I went to a Jewish school, and when we came out, children were spitting at us and called us Christ killers. So I grew up that way, unfortunately, that I was a Christ killer, and I didn't realize that uh, Jesus was an ordained rabbi, and um, so I grew up with that kind of a feeling. And then uh, when uh, Kasia, Kosice became Hungary in 1938, uh, and the Nazi, the Nilash party came to my city, we were thrown out of an apartment where we lived, and we had to go to a side street. And then, of course, I had to wear the yellow stars, and I remember uh, the saying, Lengyel Magyar Hatar Zsidó Mentes Hazar. When I was taken to the, to the cattle car, my mom said to me that I'm telling you now that no matter, we don't know where we're going, honey. We don't know what's going to happen. Just remember, no one can take away from you what you put in your own mind. And that's exactly what happened. Everything was taken away from me. My mom was taken to the gas chambers. I followed my mom. And Dr. Mengele grabbed me and told me, you're going to see your mother very soon. She's just going to take a shower and promptly throw me on the other side. And today, you see, sometimes we realize that we do not appreciate what we have until we lose it. So even today, a piece of bread is very hard for me to not finish everything on my plate. I eat up your leftovers, or I take it home, and my daughter keeps telling me, it's okay, mom, it's okay to leave food on the plate. And the best revenge to Hitler is that I have three children, five grandchildren, and three great-grandsons. I have four generations now. Revenge gives you satisfaction, but it doesn't give you the ultimate freedom. And I'm still working how to forgive myself that I survived. I had survivor's guilt and survivor's shame. I think it was very powerful for me to go back to Auschwitz and reclaim my innocence and assign the shame and guilt to the perpetrator because there is no forgiveness without rage. Don't try to cover garlic with chocolate. It doesn't taste good. It's, it's not an overnight process, but believe me, I'm getting much closer to it every day in every way that I can truly be free. And the enemy is within me that doesn't allow me to even pick up, when I graduate with honors, to pick up my, my paper because I said to myself, I'm too old and I don't deserve it because I'm alive. So it's very important to really think about your inner, inner dialogue, inner, inner um, uh, monologue, that you, the way you talk to yourself in the morning can change your body chemistry. So I hope that self-love will give you the self-care which is not narcissistic. Self-love is self-care, and become a good parent to you. Find that little boy and find that little girl in you, and be good mommy to you. Mommies give unconditional love. So where is the enemy? Yeah. 
So look at the polarities, because there is no love without hate. There is no life without death. There is no summer without winter. But how to get the thesis, the antithesis, and the synthesis that we're able to somehow find a way that is my way of living, that I look in a mirror and I like what I see because I act upon it. And I am most blessed that not only I survive, but I guide other people. I don't like to call myself a therapist, but I like to call myself a guide. I take your precious little hand and we revisit the places where you've been and even reliving that experience, but you don't get stuck in there. I go through the valley of the shadow of death, but I don't camp there. When I speak at churches, I like to talk about Jesus who told us, love thy neighbor as thyself. Because I think God created a Jesus for us to look at someone who can truly love unconditionally, not to judge the woman who committed adultery, but telling her to go home and not do that anymore. But mostly what I like, that when he said turn the other cheek, he didn't say go back and do the same thing all over again. He said look at the same thing from a different perspective. And I like that very much that I look at Auschwitz as an opportunity, an opportunity to give me, discover something I never thought was possible, that I had to take care of my sister, that all we had was each other then. And you know what? All we have is each other now. So instead of saying, why me? I say, what now? I can change the present. I can change the way I look at things. And I can learn how to treat people, not the way they are, but the way they are able to, to become, to be free from their own prison that is in your own mind. And I'll show you that the key is in your pocket. So I welcome you as the future wonderful ambassadors who are going to really teach everyone in Hungary that love is what you're born with and joy is what you're born with. And you actually learn to hate and you learn to judge. I think children don't really do what we say. They do what they see. So I hope to be a good role model to you that I have no time to hate. I have no time actually to be a victim. I was victimized. That was done to me. It's not who I am. So I will never forget what happened to me. I will not overcome what happened to me because I'm reminded every day when I go on the street and I see some barbed wires where they're building homes, I immediately am back in Auschwitz. But I don't live there. I don't set up household there. I came to terms with it. I call it my cherished wound. And that keeps me every morning looking at the mirror and be so grateful that I'm given another opportunity to guide other people from victimization to empowerment, from darkness to light. I love movement because, you know, I'm a dancer, and I hope this conference will give you another opportunity to have your rebirth, to have your renaissance, that you can finally be and give birth to the you that was meant to be free. Szervusz, szervusztok! Györgyike, nagyon szépen köszönöm, hogy te organizáltad ezt a, ezt a gyönyörű konferenciát, és én, a, én bár tudnék veletek lenni, 
de tudom, hogy nagyon jó lesz, mert hogyha együtt vagyunk, akkor erősebbek vagyunk, és azt tudom, hogy lesz egy nagyon-nagyon jó konferencia, és fogtok táncolni, és fogtok örülni, és fogtok sokat-sokat építeni, hogy a, mi nagyon jók vagyunk a gyerekekhez és a fiataloknak, hogy lássanak minket, hogy nekünk nincs időnk semmire, csak azt, hogy építessünk egy világot, ahol én, én valahogy mindent csinálok, hogy ne legyen soha, 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 ami történt, ami történt velem. Isten áldjon benneteket. Nagyon-nagyon szeretem, hogy én tudok mondani ilyesmit nektek most az én 90 éves Ásületésnapon. Köszönöm szépen!